The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. talk to you about supernatural protection. Supernatural protection. If you need one of the bulletins with the message, if you raise your hand, I shall get it to you. If you're watching online, revival.com, you can download the notes from the message today. Of course, one of the great passages of scripture concerning protection will be Psalm 91. So let's go there, if you would. It says, He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. How many grab that for yourself here today? Then another passage I want to go through here would be 2 Kings chapter 6, if you go there, please. And I'm going to read from verse 8. Then the king of Syria warned against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. So in other words, this happened quite a number of times. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. He called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. <coughs> but Elisha, the prophet that's in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, behold, he's in Dothan. Uh, Some people think he was living in Alabama at the time. (laughs) Therefore sent he the horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. So what does this tell me? It tells me that there are two realms. 
There's the natural realm where everybody lives in and they see everything in the natural. But then there's a supernatural realm which you can't see. What the enemy does is trap people into the natural realm and not allow them to see the supernatural realm. What took place with the prophet's servant is that God suddenly opened his eyes even though they were surrounded by the enemy and it looked like they were out manned and the chariots were arrayed against them. Yet, when his eyes were open, he saw the chariots of God and the angels of God that were camped about him, which was much more than the enemy. If you looked at Elijah and his servant, you said just the two of them. How in the world? There's no ways that they can even prevail. And yet, already, it was in place. It was just that the servant couldn't see. What we have to understand as God's children, and we have to understand this because the Bible says, and I won't go there, but the book of Hebrews chapter 2, how will we escape if we neglect so great salvation that this salvation given to us is beyond just the saving of your sins. This salvation is the protection given to God's people from whatever the enemy has planned out there and the fact that he's given his angels to encamp about you and to protect you in your ways of obedience and service. That means you don't have to be afraid even though you feel you're by yourself, yet you know that you're not alone because he camps about his people. Isn't that phenomenal? It means when you drive down the road, you might just be in your car by yourself, but you don't see the entourage of the angelic hosts that are following you along. Come on. When the president of the United States travels, they have a huge entourage. It goes before them and comes behind them, the Secret Service. I mean, it's a huge operation. And they run surveillance hours before he even gets there. Well, guess what? We have even more than what he has. Somebody said, no, pastor, come on, just little on me. Just little old you. You have more protection than the president of the United States of America. I've seen seals more excited at the fish <laughs> coming their way at the aquarium. People think angels are little fat things, babies in diapers, they fly around and they come around about February the 14th and they shoot a Cupid's bow. Some of you are praying that one arrow will come for you this. Angels are not little fat babies. If you ever see an angel, I promise you right now, your knees will shake together. Your feet, your knees will have fellowship with, the other, with each other. I can promise you right now, it will, be, it will be a shocking experience. When I hear people say, well, an angel appeared to me, and I look at them and go, an angel didn't appear to you, impossible. Impossible. If an angel appeared to you, you wouldn't talk so flippantly about it. I've got news for you. It's not a game. They come from the presence of the Lord. Are you with me? Now somebody said, well, have you ever seen an angel? <laughs> you know, I don't want to belabor the point. No, in actuality, I've never seen an angel. I personally have never seen an angel. I'd like to see one, but I've never had. The only angel I've ever seen is my wife. <laughs> Sitting right here, this blonde angel right here. <clears throat> You can do a little bit better than that. All my children when they were sleeping. All my grandbabies when they awake. But then come to think about it, I've never actually even seen a demon. I've seen some Christians that reminded me of a demon. But here's what I do know. Blessed are those that have not seen and yet believed. Can you say amen? amen? See, we live in the realm where we see things, we perceive things. 
But there's another realm. If your eyes were open, you'd see things, other things, that, or things that people, other people don't see. You would hear things other people don't hear. You would know things other people don't know. That's the supernatural realm. May God open your eyes to see what others cannot see. May God open your ears to hear what others have not heard. May God open your mind spiritually to perceive what others have not. This is what visions and dreams are all about. It's imperative for the church to step into a higher level. Are you with me? Somebody said, I'll be criticized. You, you criticize anyway. If you're going to be criticized for just being a weak, defeated, powerless church, you might as well be criticized for being a Holy Ghost on fire book of Acts church. Amen. I can't believe how many ministers are compromising the gospel, the power of the gospel. They get attacked because of prosperity. Oh, well, we changed our views. We don't really believe in prosperity. Well, shut up. I ain't changing nothing. Are you with me? I'm not schizophrenic. Because they try to become acceptable. And the very people they try to become acceptable to, even if you change what you believe, then they just, they're going to call you a flip-flop politician. That's all you are. Today you believe this, tomorrow you believe whatever people want you to believe. No, you need to know what you believe and not change one thing. We're not here to become acceptable to people, we're here to become acceptable to God. Can you say amen? Well, they don't like that and they don't, they don't like a lot of things. We don't believe what, I'm not here to please people, I'm here to please God. Amen. Somebody said, well, be nice, I'm being nice. But you don't be nice around rattlesnakes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some say, well, I like snakes. I collect snakes. No, knock yourself out. I kill snakes. I'm from Africa. You don't sit and play with snakes. So I believe the supernatural. I believe the power of God to protect his people. And the angels of God that encamp about you. But I don't have to see an angel to believe. I know what the word says. Can you say amen? amen. Say this often to me, the angels of the Lord encamp about me. They go with me. That means you're not alone. You're not by yourself. Amen. Amen. Say this. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I personally believe that this will be the life and death of many people in this final hour. Because they either believe, if you believe, God will spare you. If you don't, you'll be cut off without a remedy. Because he said, how will you escape? if you neglect so great salvation. Yeah. I heard this about a certain city where the whole of the witches movement was prevalent and the head witch or wizard, a man, went to meet one of the men of God of that city and he said, we have tried to kill you, we've tried to do everything. We cast spells, we do everything we can, but we can't touch you because you keep pleading the blood. You keep talking about the blood of Jesus that protects you. And we try everything. We get together, we do incantations, we do spells, we put potions, we do lotions, we do every kind of thing known to man, and we try to kill you and we cannot because the blood. The blood of Jesus will protect you. The blood of Jesus will protect you. 
The angels of heaven will protect you. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we travel the world. We go to 63 countries and people ask me, say, you know, how many bodyguards do you have? I said, Lord, I don't have any bodyguards. Somebody said, you don't have bodyguards. Well, it looks like you have them yet. We have security. We have ushers here at the church, obviously. You need to have that. It's imperative that you do that. You can't just allow anybody to come in and do whatever they want to. But if you see people with me, just so you know, they there because I'm protecting them, not because they're protecting me. <laughs> Just want to inform you. People come hang out with me just so I can protect them because they know. I'm from Africa, folks. Listen to me carefully. So, but the angels are with you. Angels encamp about you. Do you believe this? overwhelming today. So the Bible promises you that as God protects his people, that nothing will come upon you unawares. You say, why? Because you're living in the secret place. And a secret place is a place other people can't access. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You will be steps ahead of the enemy because the Bible says in John chapter 16 verses 13 to 15 that the Holy Spirit will come, will show you things to come. He will receive from heaven and disclose it unto you, transmit it unto you. So you, you receive, you receive a heavenly transmission. You'll go to sleep. Then the Lord speaks to you in the night hour. Okay, this is going to happen tomorrow. This, this, this. This will take place and God will warn you. You'll be driving down the road. The Lord said, take the next exit and head off on this way. Amen. God will protect you. Hallelujah. His angels are encamped about you in all your ways of obedience and service, and they will bring inside information to you. So in other words, somebody said, I felt, I felt this strongly to do this. I heard a voice that said to me, do that. Somebody said, who was it? It was an angel. It was an angel of the Lord. Somebody said, well, I didn't see it. You don't need to see. Some people think if they see that they have more faith. No, it actually is less faith. Are you with me? Without seeing you believe, that's more faith. We, we experienced this on this recent trip through Europe. We had set aside two days because of a team of eight of us traveling to take a day break, plus get all your laundry done, because you can understand, you can't carry clothes ad infinitum. You, you, go, you gotta wash your clothes. So we took one day of the, the two weeks off to rest, sleep a little bit longer. And so we, we got to Bratislava, Slovakia, which is the former Czechoslovakia. There were 50 churches that came together and we were meeting in this big arena. And there's a church about two hours away in Budapest, Hungary. And I'd preached for them 20 years before. And Pastor Eric even said, you know, we're gonna be going near Hungary. Do you wanna go preach for Pastor Shando? I said, no. You, you know, you don't call him, he calls you. You know, I, I'm not looking for a meeting. I want to go to new places and I actually want to just go to churches and, uh, and he runs his big operation in Budapest. You know, the Lord, if the Lord wants me, he'll work that out. I'm not going to, I'm not looking for a place to preach. In many places, we just, we got to just pick the right one. And I'd never been to Bratislava, never been to Slovakia. So I really was excited about that. Well, we get there and there's this place packed. I mean, at six o'clock, an hour before, the place is jammed. Over 2,250 people packed the place. And so we meet back behind the stage. They put this tent up in this arena, like they erect a tent. And you go back and then there's a whole sitting room and they got all dates and all kinds of snacks and stuff, you know, where pastors all come meet and people get refreshed and whatever. So I'm sitting back there talking to the pastor and he was telling me how he got touched 20 years before in the meetings that we had in Budapest, Hungary. And then 
a, 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 several gentlemen arrived from Budapest. Pastor Shandor Nima's son-in-law, who's now in real estate, married one of his daughters. And of course, he showed up and so we sat fellowshipping and he brought gifts for Donick and myself from his pastor and just wanted to tell him that they loved us. And, and so we're sitting in the back room just talking and we, we never even talked about, you know, coming to Budapest or whatever. And I went and sat on the front row and I'm just sitting there minding my own business waiting for the preliminaries of what's taking place, you know, because you, they're speaking in their language and I have somebody telling me in English what they're saying, you know. And so Pastor Eric comes up to me and said, listen, Pastor Shandor just texted his son-in-law and said, would you come to Budapest tomorrow night? Well, I know that's our only night off. So in the natural, no, we're not coming to Budapest. I can't come to Budapest. I didn't know that they only had one service and the service was Saturday night and this is Friday night and Saturday, sun, Saturday was supposed to be a night of rest. Sunday, we're flying to Kisinau, Moldova and we got to do all our laundry and get everything ready so we can run the next week. We've already been running Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So now we, we're going to end up losing that and we're doing then Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. So then the only day off is the following Saturday and I don't want to burn everybody out. And as he said that to me, I heard the audible voice of the Lord, go and strengthen Pastor Shandor. I didn't even know, I didn't know anything. I hadn't even spoke to him on the phone. I didn't know anything. I just heard the audible voice of the Lord. And as I heard the voice of the Lord, I began to weep uncontrollably. I was, I was just shaken to the core because it was, it was God. Somebody said, I think the Lord spoke to me. No, he did not. God never spoke to you. No one thinks God spoke to them. You know when he speaks to you. And no, I think the Lord talked to me. He didn't. Relax. He didn't. I think I heard from God. You didn't. I'll help you right there. You never heard from God. When you hear from God, you know it. You know it. And I said to Pastor Eric, we'll go. I didn't know all of what was happening. I just knew the Lord said, go. So we get up, a minister, power of God hits the place. It was surge. If anybody's seen the replay of the, of the Bratislava meeting, it looked like tornadoes running through the whole place. I mean, it was like surge. I mean, these people haven't been in a meeting in 20 years. You know, how they, they wouldn't know what was going on. But the power of God just hit that place over 1300, the altar. And I, I, I said to Pastor Eric, I said, listen, you and I are going to go to Budapest tonight. We're going to leave. We're going to go to Budapest. We'll wake up there. And then the team can come tomorrow. I said, already my laundry got done. Somehow in three hours, it was all done. So I don't need to wait tomorrow. And then if I get to Budapest, then I can at least sleep in and get a little bit extra because I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm already shaken by what's just happened. So he said, fine. So we drove with his son-in-law to Budapest. We check in the hotel and I go to sleep. I wake up, Pastor Shandor comes to the hotel to meet with me and I meet him in the lobby and he said, he said, I have to tell you what happened to me. He said, yes, last night I was in my office, I was praying. He said, I had my eyes closed. He said, the presence of the Lord filled the room. And he said, I heard a voice saying, look up. And he said, I looked up and he said, I saw someone was standing on my left side. And he said, I turned to look and it was an angel of the Lord. And the angel spoke to him and the angel said this, tell Rodney to come to preach in Budapest tomorrow night. So when he tells me that, now I start weeping all over again. I thought, that was what I heard there. I heard an angel speak to me, but I didn't know it was an angel speak to me, but he had an angel appear to him in his office. And then I thought, oh my God. I was like totally humbled. First of all, an angel even mentioned my name. Lord have mercy, you know. But then I realized how supernatural the trip was. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes you can think, oh, I'm just doing this or whatever, but you don't understand that the hand of God is guiding you. And then you realize, no, no, angels are actually involved in this whole thing. No, it's another level, ladies and gentlemen. Angels are involved. 
angel. An angel appeared to a man two hours away and said, I want you to have him come tomorrow night, which was the only night we had off. If he asked us any other night, we couldn't have come because we were booked every other night. It was supernatural. So, so suddenly, forget what happened in Budapest. I could talk about that, but that's not the issue. The issue is that the unseen hand of God is guiding you. And if he would guide me, he will guide you. He will guide you that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're right smack dab in the middle of the perfect will of God and therefore you are in the secret place of the Most High abiding under the shadow of the Almighty and you can say of the Lord He is my refuge my God in Him will I trust surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowl And this is not just for somebody traveling internationally. This is for people living right here in Tampa, Florida. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. America's a dangerous place. When we came from Africa, we'd already seen all the movies of America. We we thought, oh my God, we're going to America. That's Miami Vice, that's that's everything, it's bad. Because that's all they put on television. All the bad movies and American killing and everything like that. We come from Africa. We thought, you know, in Africa you could get eaten by a lion. You could get eaten by a crocodile. In America, drug dealers and preachers. God has always protected his children. Always. Always. Protect his children. Genesis 28 verses 13 to 15. Jacob, God said to him, I'm with you, I will keep you, and I will watch over you. God says to you, I'm with you, I will keep you, I will watch over you. Three of you got excited about that. (laughs) Joshua 1 and verse 9. Don't be afraid. I will go wherever you go. I'm going to be with you. I'll be right there with you. I'll be right there with you. God says to you, you go in my name. I will be there. I will watch over my word to perform it. I will protect you. You have to grab a hold of this. You have to know that the Lord is with you. Grab this for yourself here today. Know this beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is with you, especially in the hour that is upon the earth. This time that we're living in, perilous times, things, upheavals in nations. You have no clue what the wicked are planning and plotting behind closed doors. The enemy is so upset right now that there's no telling what they might try to pull off, but yet you shall not be afraid for you shall know that the Lord is with you and he will protect you and he will lead you and he will guide you and he will go before you and he will make the crooked path straight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Kings 6 and verse 16, fear not, there are more that are with us than are with them. There are more that are with you than are with them. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I preach myself happy. I, I, I feel like I could run the building right now. I could just run the building three times right now. I want to say this to our police officers and people that put themselves in harm way on a daily basis. If you pray this prayer, no matter where you go, God will surround you. The Lord will go before you. God will protect you. No harm and evil will come nigh to you. No harm. No harm will come nigh to you. And that goes for people serving the ministry. Anyone that's put themselves in a harm way. You, you hear the stories coming out of World War I, coming out of World War II? People that landed on the beach in Normandy. When you, when you look at that, it was virtually impossible. How would somebody even survive that?
And yet some said they heard a voice. Some said they felt a hand guided them. Some said, turn right. Some said, move. The unseen hand of God protecting you. Somebody said, yeah, but I wasn't even saved. Aren't you glad that he protected you even when you weren't saved? That he looked after you even when you weren't saved? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 7. God is a way of wreaking total confusion and havoc in the camp of your enemies. Deuteronomy 28 verse 7. Your enemies shall run from you seven ways. Seven ways. Seven. Seven ways. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That means they're going to run from you in stark terror. Now, let me do this. I know I'm going to pick up pastors. Come here, you. Come here, you. Pastor Eric, if you'd come. Come here, you. Please. Richard, you can get involved in this. Come over here, Pastor Derek. Come. Come on. Come over here quickly. Come. Come, Pastor Brock. You can come. Come, Pastor Tony. All right. So now let's say these are all my enemies. Spread out. No, I'm going to show you something here. Come on, spread out in a long line. Guys, come on, what's wrong with you? Spread out in a long line. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, come on now. <laughs> I'm going to take them all out. <laughs> I'm going to take them all out. Now, so let's say that every one of these, all the, these are our pastors, but let's say they're all out. They're my enemies. They hate me. They're coming to kill me. They're going to attack me. So I'm, I'm going to paint a picture like this is a movie, and then I'll freeze it, and I'll show you what God does. Okay. So... I want you to come at me like you, you, I'll tell you when the camera rolls and you can come at me like you're gonna, like you're gonna kill me and then I'm gonna go freeze and then you'll freeze and then I'll give you other commandments of what's gonna happen to you. No, no, because I want you to see what takes place when God intervenes in your life. Because this is not by your own natural ability to defend yourself. No, this has got nothing to do with weaponry of the natural. I don't care if you the 10th Dan in Taekwondo. This has got nothing to do with that. Because I know you all think you're going to see a martial arts di display here, and I'm going to take them all out. It's got nothing to do with that. This is the Lord doing what he does. Okay, so if the Bible says your enemies will run from you seven ways, or God has a way of pulling the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots, wreaking total havoc in the camp of the wicked, what God does many times... In, as they're coming against you, okay, watch this now. So I'll tell you, I'll count to three, you come at me, and then I'll say freeze, then just freeze wherever you are, whatever action you find yourself in, okay? And then I'm going to give you another command, and then you do that, because I want to show you what the Lord does, okay? You ready? One, two, three. Freeze! No, okay, hold it. Watch. that down. What God does, he then turns them on each other. Attack yourself. He puts them on each other. They start attacking each other. Okay, stop, stop. Oh, are you okay? Lord, heal him. Jesus. Be kind to him. God wreaks confusion in the camp of the wicked. When you are obeying him, God will turn them. So 
They're coming at you. There's no doubt they're coming at you. But he wreaks total havoc in amongst them where they turn on each other. And when they turn on each other, they don't have the time to get. They were coming for you. They were going to take you out. But now they're consumed with attacking each other. Are you with me? I'm so glad we're friends. I didn't think it would turn out well for me had the Lord not intervened on my behalf. I mean, I was just giving you an illustration so that you, because people say, well, how in the world would you ever have victory against that array that's against you? Because like that, God wreaks havoc in the camp of the wicked and they turn on each other. So if they turn on each other and they consume with each other, how are they gonna focus on you? Yeah, they came with the intent to destroy you, but now they're caught up with each other. Does that make sense? You understand that? Somebody said, how did you come up with that idea? As I was meditating on this, I saw that. It was fun. It was fun. You enjoyed that? You could have gone a little easy on Pastor Derek. <laughs> hey. Who did that? Pastor who? Pastor Chris really hit you hard? Have a little respect for the older guy. And you were gonna throw a plant on my head? <laughs> Deuteronomy 28 and verse 10. The people shall see that you're called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. So in other words, people will begin to say, look, just don't touch that guy. Leave him alone. Listen. Because let me tell you right now, he prays. And when they pray, stuff happens. So just, just kind of just steer clear. Leave them alone. Leave him alone. The word will get out. Demons will spread the word. We tried that already. We're going to bust it. Psalm 34 and verse 7, he encamps about and delivers his people. Not only does he encamp about you, but will deliver you, deliver you out of everything that you're facing right now. You will be delivered. And then Psalm 91 verse 11, he will give his angels charge of you to keep you in all of your ways. So someone said, Pastor, how do I activate this level of protection? You have to receive it by faith. You can't earn this. You can't go make yourself, Lord, please, I pray that I would have the faith one day to receive this kind of protection. No, just believe it. Just take Psalm 91, believe it. Say, this is my Psalm. This Psalm is written for me and I believe it. Blow it up, stick it in your closet, put it on your fridge, stick it on you know, in your bathroom, on the mirror. Be confident in the fact that the Lord is with you. Be confident that he's about you as a wall of fire. Be confident that no harm and evil will come near you. Be confident that his angels are camp about you and his blood protects you. Be at peace because you've set your love upon me. I will deliver you. There will never be a time that the Lord won't come and deliver you. Just like the three Hebrew children, when they would not compromise and they would not bow to the graven image set up by Nebuchadnezzar. They even said, we may burn, but we will not bow. And so when Nebuchadnezzar's anger was kindled against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they heat the fire seven times hotter, and they took the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and threw them into the middle of the burning, fiery furnace. The moment they hit the furnace, someone else was in the fire with them. 
Even Nebuchadnezzar said, did we not throw three men into the fire? And I see a fourth man. There's a fourth man in the fire. Who is this fourth man? Who is this one? Oh, hallelujah. The moment they hit the flames, he stood, spit across time and space and met them right in the middle of the fire. He said, if they won't bow, they'll not burn. And the Bible said, not even the hair, the head was singed, nor was there smoke on their garments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said, you actually really believe the Bible, don't you? Yeah. Don't come in and say, well, that was for the Old Testament. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, my second name is Meshach. No, <laughs> I believe if God can protect the three Hebrew children, he can protect you. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 The same with Daniel in the lion's den. You don't, listen, you do not go into a lion's den. I don't care if you call yourself the lion whisperer. They would keep those lions hungry. The basis of it was that when you were thrown into a lion's den, the moment you hit the bottom of the den, there was a cracking of bones. And they threw Daniel in. And if you've ever been around a lion, a lion is another story to be done here right now. We have people get eaten all the time in Africa because they think it's a zoo. <laughs> Tourists come and they get out of the Jeep to photograph a lion and the lion eats them and the camera. People have gone on honeymoon and the husband gets eaten. They think, they think it's a zoo. They think, oh, oh a beautiful lion. <laughs> We've done many safaris. And they tell you, stay at the level of the vehicle because the lion does not pick up a vehicle as an enemy because it's not in its instinct, but the shape of a man is. So if, as long as you sit with the vehicle and you stay in position, the lion looks up, he sees the vehicle, he doesn't see you, and you find. And lions are walking a foot away from you, right by the vehicle. But you part one with the vehicle. And so I, I was taking pictures, and there was this whole pride of lion that we eating, I thought, man, I got somebody ahead of me. I want to get a better shot. So I stood up and zoomed the camera. <laughs> and this big lion was eating. And he looked up. And when he looked up like this, he looked through the lens and through the back of my head. And I went like this. <laughs> My knees just buckled. Like that. And the lion looked, and then he dropped his head. And I thought, that was close. <laughs> so when Daniel hit the bottom of the den, in the natural, he was finished. In the natural, they would rip him to shreds. But the lions came and they didn't touch him. He obviously felt their breath. He, obviously they came and they sniffed him. They could, feel, they could feel the breath on his cheeks. But they never touched him. Are you with me? 
So God didn't deliver the Hebrew children from the burning fiery furnace. He delivered them from the fire in the furnace. They still went in the furnace. God didn't deliver Daniel from the lion's den. He delivered him from the lions in the den. You might still be in the furnace and you might still be in the den, but he will deliver you. Hallelujah. My compass. Woo. He shall deliver you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 5 and verse 7, cast in the whole of your care, your anxieties, your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. I'm watching the new dad. I mean, obviously, old, older dad, but with the two, with the twins now. I'm watching. I'm watching them. They're, little, they're two little ones. They're two weeks old. They just squawk. He's watching over every little thing. Let me tell you. Little Kenny, uh, he's there. Jet, uh, he's there. If you, as an earthly parent, Watch over your little ones like that. How much more is not your heavenly father? Watch over you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I, I, I don't know what else to do to make this plain for you. Are you with me? All I can do is ask the Lord to please, can you open their eyesight? Can you show them? Can they see clearly? Can they see clearly? Yes. Amen. Amen. Psalm 55 and 22, cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to lead you in a confession today, which comes from the prayer journal. How many have enjoyed your prayer journal? This is from your prayer journal and it's from month four. It's the confession in month four of the prayer journal. And I'm going to lead you in that here today. And I want you to put this in your heart. Somebody said, how many more times would you preach on supernatural protection until you're all supernaturally protected? Amen. Amen. It's like asking me how long, how much more will I talk about supernatural provision when all of you are walking in supernatural provision? Can you say amen? amen? How long will you keep mentioning supernatural direction when every one of you are hearing from heaven? Until then, I have to keep preaching it. Can you say amen? amen. Okay, are you ready for this? Say this off to me. Those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall rest, abide, remain stable, and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. Therefore, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. On Him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly and perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers. Under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth, his faithfulness, shall be my shield, my buckler, and rampart. I will not be afraid of the terror of the night. Would you think about that? Nor for the arrow, the evil plots, the slanders of the wicked that fly by day. Nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor of the destruction and sudden death 
that surprise, and they wasted noonday. Who remembers when they declared Hillsborough County as a Zika virus emergency area? Remember that? I tell you. I stood in the pulpit. I said, I cursed the Zika virus. And then we never heard from it again. This county was in an emergency. Some say we don't have that ability. Oh, yeah, you have that ability. Sure you do. Sure you do. Two worlds. The natural world where everybody lives or the supernatural world where God lives and you choose which one you're living under. A thousand may fall in my sight. 10,000 in my right hand. It shall not come near me. Only with my eyes. As a spectator shall I witness the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord my refuge, the most high my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me nor shall any plague, calamity, or disaster come near my house or my family because I obey and serve him. He shall command his angels and give them charge over me. They will accompany, they will defend and preserve me. They will keep me and guard me in all my ways. We're going to tell you, we do that every time we travel. When I was a kid growing up, every time we got in the car, my parents would pray, Father, we thank you, the extra passage of the car, and no harm and evil will come nigh to us. And they pray even over the journey. Today, people just get and go, and whatever happens, happens. And I so believe in that even when we get on an airplane. The first thing I do while those engines are warming up and they're taxing or whatever, I say, Father, thank you. We commandeer this vehicle for the purpose of the carrying the gospel to the nation of the earth. I thank you for the anointing upon the pilots. I thank you for the anointing upon this plane. This aircraft will fly the way it was created to fly. No harm and evil will come nigh to us for the anointing upon all the computerization, the hydraulics, the fuel lines, everything that you camp about us as a wall of fire. And then I say, we are going from, and I declare the city, we're leaving Tampa, and we are going to such and such a city, and we will be there, and then we will come back, and we will come back safely. In the name of Jesus. And I normally do that. Everybody will be praying with me, and then we taxi, and then I just pray in other tongues. And then we take off, and then I don't even worry about it again. I mean, there'll be times where you hit turbulence like that, and you go, We have prayed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody said, why do you do that? Because I purpose in my heart that the last thing I'll ever hear is a pilot up front going, Jesus! <laughs> How do you know you're in trouble? When the pilot of the plane starts to pray, you know it is finished. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Angels are singing. You know, when the pilot starts to pray, pilots should not be praying. Pilots fly. Pilots don't pray. I pray, they fly. Because I don't fly. Therefore, I pray. Somebody said, would you ever like to fly yourself? No, because I would be praying more than I would be flying. I'm not stupid. <laughs> and I don't want to be the one shouting, Jesus. Somebody said, who's up there? Pastor Rodney. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. God will, God will preserve you. God will preserve you. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which I always think is the music because when you get on a plane, they're always giving you a demonstration of the life vest and then you just grab it and you just blow. You know, you can blow and it all inflates and it's just great. And then it's a whistle to draw attention. A whistle. You're going to be blowing a whistle in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at like 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Have you watched Titanic? 
Have you watched the movie Titanic? How many people were blowing whistles and nobody knew who they were? You're going to be floating in the middle of the Pacific, blowing a whistle with great white sharks swimming around. Are you out of your mind? (laughs) Who's coming? Nah, 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 nah. You know, who's coming? <laughs> I'd rather pray before we even get to that place. Can you say amen? amen. All right. <laughs> they shall defend and preserve me. And keep me and guard me. And all my ways. They will lift me up. And bear with me up. So that I will not strike my foot against a stone. I will tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent I will trample underfoot. I have this promise from the Lord. Because I have set my love upon him. Therefore, he will rescue, deliver, and protect me. He will set me on high because I know, I understand, I acknowledge his name. And because I have a personal knowledge of his mercy, his love, his kindness, because I trust and rely on him. Knowing he he will never, ever forsake me. I shall call on him. He will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me with long life. He will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Hallelujah. Supernatural protection for every single one of you. In Jesus' name. By land, by sea, by air, in your house, while you're awake and while you sleep, can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I feel the anointing so strong right now. I feel the anointing of heaven in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, blessed Savior. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Come on, just lift those hands and just thank him right now. Supernatural protection for every single one of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, here's what I'm going to pray, that the Lord would open your eyes and that you would see. Lord, let them see. Give them a revelation of that which we preach. (coughs) That their eyes will be open. Let me close with this. There have been many meetings over the years where uh, people have come to me and they saw angels of the Lord. The four main ones that are behind me when I minister. Four. 
big, huge. One of them has been with me from my birth. Somebody said, how do you know that? Well, the lady that saw it asked the angel. The angel said, I've been here from day one. The other angel said he's there to protect the call. And then there were others that had different assignments. And that's been confirmed on several occasions. And I'll tell you right now, I know that they're there. I just have never seen them. I was with a group of people, you know, they saw angels. They said, your angel's right behind you right now. Do you want to talk to him? Ask him. I said, no, I don't want to talk to him. I said, because, you know, I said, well, ask him this. And he asked, he asked him that and they gave me the answer, which I knew he would give me anyway. So I said, well, why do I need to talk to him if he's going to tell me what I already knew? Like, tell me something I don't know. And probably if I did see them, I'd be harassing them. What, what in the world is going on here? But seriously, guys, seriously. Like, can we get the show on the road now? I mean, is there something you need to sort out with me? Can you swat me up the side of the head? Can, I mean, seriously. Because I'm just that kind of a person. So the Lord doesn't want me to know any of that stuff. So I feel like I'm like Inspector Clouseau in the original Pink Panther movies, if you've ever seen it. <laughs> he goes along and there's all these assassins come to kill him, but they're killing everybody else and he's just bungling along, you know, and I feel that. I feel like I'm just like Inspector Clouseau just going along and everybody else is getting taken out, you know, and the Lord's with me, protecting me. And so I'll just walk my faith. But come on. But I pray that God will open your eyes and that, and that you would see. Clearly, so that you know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. From today, you'll never doubt that the Lord's with you and that he's protecting you and his angels are watching over you. You'll never doubt it again. Ever. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? So when you drive in a car and you've got a back seat open, you know, say, hey, I'm glad the angels are sitting back there. You know, they're with me. Amen. When you're on a plane, there's a seat open. Some said, the seat open, ash not, angels sitting right there. Amen. When you go to your hotel room and you close the door, the angels stand right outside the front door, just, just watching everything. There's some angels at the elevator checking everybody coming and going. There's angels on the floor above you watching the, the, your neighbors above you and the neighbors below you. Are you with me? You're being protected. You're not alone. Not alone. Who needed to hear this today? Praise God. And there's a lot of other things I could talk about, angels, but I won't get into it today. Maybe I'll get into some of this at the camp meeting. Because they're flames of fire. And the camp meeting is called fire power. So when you minister, you're not ministering alone. I'm preaching. Somebody over there has been shaken like this. You don't, you don't see what's going on. You didn't see a big angel go right up and grab them. And, and he's shaking them. Shake, shake them. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't see that. You didn't see it. You didn't see it. You didn't see it. You just saw somebody shake it. You didn't see an angel grab a hold of it. You didn't see it. So we say, I went to that river church, strange place. The pastor was preaching. People just start being shaken right in their seats. I don't even understand what's going on. Yeah, an unseen angel had a hold of them in a headlock.
You okay, Octavia? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Trust me, there's a couple of more people I'd love to shake right now. <laughs> but I'll have mercy on you. Amen. Why are you nominating him? No, that final remnant of the assemblies of God, I cast it out of you right now, <laughs> Jesus day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, the fire of God's falling all over this place. We're starting a week early. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, just close your eyes. Lift your hands. Let the Lord just touch you right where you are. Don't worry about the person behind you or in front of you or on the side of you. Put your eyes on Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Many of you already, many have experienced supernatural deliverance and protection. Some of you just don't even know it. There are many times when tragedy was about to strike, yet the Lord protected you and preserved you. Things that came close, but couldn't get any closer. Maybe when you get to heaven, the Lord will pull up your life and show you how many times that he intervened supernaturally. Even now, the Lord is fighting for you. Even now, he goes before you to make the crooked path straight. Even now, he's wreaking total confusion and havoc in the camp 
of the wicked. Even now, he's pulling the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariot. Even now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody to bow your heads, close your eyes. The Bible does say that the rain of God falls on the just and the unjust. There's no doubt in my mind that God is protecting people even in the world who don't know him and protects them until the day that they can surrender their life. The reason he does that if he didn't, the devil would kill all of them. And God protects them. But if you read Psalm 91, it says, because you set your love upon it. I know many Christians that don't walk in this realm. And God has not planned for you to die a tragic death. God hasn't planned that. God hasn't planned for your life to go out in calamity. God's plan for your life to be a testimony. There are many places they don't even preach these things. Oh, they'll read Psalm 91, but it's just there. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. But this is for you. For every single one of you. And I purposed in my heart that when I got before the Lord on that day, that you not say to me, you know, you failed to tell my people. what I had prepared for them. But the Lord knows that to the best of my ability that I've endeavored to share everything and not hold anything back from his people concerning his plans and purposes. And that which has been offered to them this side of heaven But I want to extend an offer now to those that have come here today that you fit into any one of these three categories. And maybe you've come here today, you've never ever given your life to Jesus. You've never ever said, Jesus be my Lord and Savior. You might have been around church for years, but you personally have never ever said, Jesus, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want to give an invitation to you today Friend, let me ask a question. If you died today, where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to a devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid, the blood was shed. And just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all the guilty stain today. The power of sin will be broken. The power of guilt and shame will be removed from your life. You might have come in here one way, but you leave another way. Today is your day, but it's about you surrendering to him and say, Lord, here I am, and I give myself to you. He will never force himself on you. He only comes where he's wanted. And today I give this invitation, so on that day, no one will be able to say, I never heard, because God will bring you right back to this very moment and say, you see, I gave you an opportunity. Would you surrender your life to him today? Would you say, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior? This very day, your life could be required of you. Will you surrender to him and say, Lord, come and save me today? Secondly, maybe you've come into this place and you gave your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you've gone cold. You're not serving God like you should. 
You've allowed the things of the world to come in. You've lost your first love. You've lost that peace, that joy. There was a time when you were radically on fire for God, but something happened. You lost that peace, that joy, that first love. But today you say, I have, I've got to come back. I've got to come back. I'm going to surrender my life afresh to him. Maybe it's something hidden that no one can see. The deep things in the heart, pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, hidden things that clog the heart of man. But you want that gone from you. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put in the heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. Again, he will not force himself on you. He only comes where he's wanted. And it's about surrender. When you surrender, you give up. I give up. I surrender to you. Will you surrender to him? Will you say, Jesus, here I am today. Take me as is. I come just like as, as I am. I can't go better myself. I come just like I am. And I surrender to you. Maybe it's not hidden. Maybe it's something that's outward that everyone could see. And so that makes it worse because people remind you of whatever. And they maybe do it on the anniversary. And so you feel like God will never use you because of things that have transpired in your life. And many people just give up. Well, I, God will never do, use me. The Lord will never do anything with my life. I got this, that, and the other thing against me. Listen, it's about surrender. God's a God of a new beginnings. God's a God of a second chance. Will you surrender to him afresh? The choice is yours. You have to say, yes, Lord, I surrender. Maybe it's not hidden, well, what is we described. Maybe you were going along and a storm came against your life. Like a hurricane from hell, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. I meet many people, even ministers say, I was going along and this thing hit me like a, like a storm. The wife died or something happened, something unforeseen happened and just took the wind out of their sails. But God says, I'm gonna to restore to you today. Surrender afresh to him today. Remember, he looks at the temperature of my heart. In the book of Revelation, he talks about hot, lukewarm or cold. He said, I would that you either hot or cold, but if you lukewarm, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. This is not the hour to be lukewarm. This is the hour to be radically on fire for God. Because Jesus is coming very, very soon. And today's your day. Maybe it's not the storms that came against you. On the final call here, maybe you're going along, you're serving the Lord, you love the Lord, but you do not have an assurance. You are not convinced. You don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt. You don't know that you know that you know that you're a child of God. You have constant doubt. The devil's always lying to you, telling you that you're not saved. But today you say, I want to make sure. Today I want to know. Today I want to know. If you fit into any one of these three categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Across this building, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, in just a quick moment, every single one of you that fit into these categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Right where you are, put your hand up now and say, pray for me. I need Jesus. God bless you, sir. God bless you, lady. God bless you back there. God bless you back there. God bless you back there. God bless you over here. God bless you. God bless you all the way to the back. God bless you there. God bless you there. Slip it up high under the overhangs. Raise it up high. Raise your hand up high and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. I see hands going up all across the building. Today is your day of freedom. Today is your day of liberty. Today he calls you to himself. You can put your hands down. I want you to look at me right now, please. In this section over here, if you didn't raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going to pray. Quickly, put your hand up and say, include me. Include me. Right at the back, anybody else, raise up high and say, yes, that's me. Slip it up high. Slip it up high. Another hand over here. Under the overhand. Right at the very back there. Another hand right at the back. Anybody else? A young lady right here on the front row. Anybody else? Quickly, slip it up high. This part over here. Slip it up high and say, that's me. Include me. Yes, I see your hands. This section here, you didn't raise your hand. Quickly, put your hand up right now. Say, include me. Anybody else? Anybody else? This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Put your hand up right at the back. Anybody else? 
Another hand at the back. Anybody else, quickly slip it up high and say, yes, that's me. Anyone else under the overhand, slip your hand up right now. This section here, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included, put your hand up right now. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I want every person that raised your hand, I want you to stand to your feet right now. Every person that raised your hand, stand. Stand. I just help them. Help them. Everyone that raised your hand, stand. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right now. Come on. Stand. Stand, 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 stand. We're going to pray. Everyone that raised your hand, stand. In Jesus' name. I want all those that are standing to come from where you are. Come down to the altar. We're going to pray together. Come. Come. close your eyes right now and raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And I want to say it to every one of you, if you mean business with God today, God means business with you. And we're going to pray one prayer, one prayer fits all. You believe it in your heart. You say it with your mouth. Pray this together with me right now. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess, with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. 
and right now, by faith, in the finished work of the cross, and by the shed blood of Jesus, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now lift both hands and just thank him for that. Just thank him for that. Just thank you for that. Now, Father, I pray that you would seal them now. Seal them by your blood and by your spirit that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. As a servant of the Most High God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of the Word of God, and by the awesome power of the Holy Spirit, I tell every single one of you right now, your sins are forgiven you right now. Forgiven. 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 Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.